I started the refit of the RD350LC. Uh, I'm just putting the things back together. I just just thought I'd show you. Uh, some sometimes I struggle to get the springs back on. Sometimes they'll go on relatively easy, like the center stand. As long as you go beyond its its limit, things like the side stand, not so much. So I always do this way. Uh, if I, got, I do have a, a hand pull uh, and some of the smaller springs it's it's really easy to do but for something like this uh, I use what's called the Spanish windlass so this is just string you know just just come on a golden string right uh, and you just wrap it round probably I don't know seven eight times or something like that stick a screwdriver through it uh, I've already tightened it so the springs ready to to drop in now and it's just a matter of just loosening it now. So the good good thing about this as well is that if you get stuck you, at any point you can just uh, put the screwdriver like that and it locks it and you can mess about with this, get it right in the right place and good stuff like that. And then you just keep going until it, it goes. Right, that's it slack. And then it's just a matter of just cutting this bit of uh, this line off, nice and easy to do, it's not hard. Right, so that's a Spanish windlass. For your seamen out there, you would have used this many times. Right, so just a bit about polishing. So I've got the uh, the forks for the RD350LC here, uh, and the uh, the the, the uh, what do you call these? The cylinders? They're the stanchion. You know what they call these? Right, uh, are, are a bit rusty. Not rusty. Well, they're rusty. Yeah, it's an it's an aluminium oxide. So I'm going to polish these up. Now uh, you can give these to professional polishers and they'll do a fantastic job. Much better than what I can do. But I'll be honest, I've been doing this uh, myself to save money for, for so long now. Uh, it just uh, goes against me to, to, to do that. Right, so, so this is what I use. This you, uh, They're not that expensive. They're not cheap. Like I think they're about a hundred and something pounds, 120, 130 pounds. Something like that. Okay. Uh, you get a the wax for put applying to the uh, the wheel. I mean, these wheels probably need changing soon. Uh, to the wheel, uh, you get different colours as well. I believe uh, I know there's a there's a chap who uh, he does polishing professionally, and he's horrified that I do this myself. Uh, with with uh, good cause uh, or good justification. Uh, but uh, he was explaining to me the process he uses and it is tremendous. Well, I, I think I do okay. There's some polished stuff over there if you can see it. GT850 uh, bits. But what, how I do it is, first of all, I apply paint stripper right, to uh, the thing. So if there is any paint there, you've got to obviously take that off. The paint stripper is not, not for that long. Something I was taught many 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 years ago was just give it a quick coat with this uh, just to help remove the the real the surface crap uh, before you start polishing uh, otherwise you, it just causes problems and, and I'll be honest if it's always worked I have no idea uh, it's, some, it's one of those things that, that I got taught it and I can't not do it because it just doesn't feel right so whether it actually helps or not I just don't know uh, but uh, yeah so that's what I do so I, I, it's not a spectator sport. Let me let me have a go polishing these up, uh, and then we'll have a look see what they're like when they're finished. So that's about ten minutes or so of, of polishing. Uh, it, it's come up okay. Uh, I'd not, maybe spend about thirty minutes per 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 unit. Uh, that the the bench polishing, you get the ma uh, the main part of it off. Some of these areas where you can't get in with the bench with the bench uh, polisher, I use a Dremel and a, a, a small polishing wheel on that, and then just just do very localized polishing. Uh, but as you can see, nice and easy. Uh, it's not complicated. And uh, yeah, give it a bash. So I'm going to have to pause the uh, the rebuild of the RD 350LC to work on this thing. As a favour. Uh, so what this is is half a valve grinder. So if you if you remember this, 
I've made this. This is it finished. So just to go over some of the controls before I have to hand it back. So what we've got is a variable speed right for the chuck. So the chuck here is where the valve sits. So just to be clear it pivots here and there is a, a, a release lock here. So if you imagine we have the main grinding wheel here right, and then this thing changes depending on the angle you want the seat face, the, uh, the valve face to be. So we have a variable speed drive for the chuck and why do you want a variable speed drive? Well it's for the diameter of the mushroom. Okay, I can't remember which way around it goes but in the manual which I managed to find uh, it does tell you the setting for the diameter. The other thing we have is the, the start control here. So we have one setting which is the grinder only, so the big wheel only. Now why would you only want to run that? Because at the other end of this big, really high quality grinding wheel is a much smaller wheel, maybe this diameter. And why do you want that? Well, because for uh, depending on how the engine's been built, if it's been built as a high performance engine or whatever, right, the standard valves may not be the correct length and they may need to shorten them or they may even be sold as you know a nominal size and you have to grind them to suit and that's what that other small uh, part of the the grinder is for at the other end uh, the chap who owns this he says he uses that quite a bit when he's building he builds Subaru engines and things like this really high performance engines so uh, yeah he says he uses that quite a bit so we go to the other end this so now we've got the big grinding wheel running and we've also got this chuck running so the valves turning as well and then then we just move the the valve in and out using this wheel here the other thing of note for this is that the chuck uh, is a pneumatic chuck so there's like uh, sets of ball bearings in this which when you put air pressure on it the, the balls open up you fit your spindle you take your air pressure off there's a, a, a button at the end here for doing that uh, and it grips the uh, the valve now the chap who owns this he he's got a couple of valve grinders he says this is as much this is his much preferred one because the other ones you have to keep changing the collet size depending on the the valve uh, and this obviously you don't you can you know much easier to use so yeah so it's all been tested it's all ready to go uh, just to take back